in the studio with me now, I have Maria Kesselman. Uh, Maria Kesselman, uh, of course, uh, took over from Sarah Brightman in Phantom of the Opera. Uh, I've not actually seen Phantom of the Opera, but I, I've, I've always wanted to see it. You know, one of those to-do yes. things. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Well, there's always time. I think it's running for a bit. It's been uh, running for quite a while. <laughs> yeah. Now, what was that like when you got the uh, the whistle, as you might say, yeah, that uh, you'd be... Do- uh, it was sort of unexpected. Yeah, it was unexpected. I was still at the Royal College of Music. I was just about to... Uh, I'd done four years, just about to do the opera course as well. And um, my agent uh, said, would I like to go and audition for Andrew? I went and sang, sang a couple of arias. And they sent round somebody on a motorbike, sent round the script later that afternoon. Had to learn the script for the next day. Uh, this was to originally understudy, Sarah. Um, uh, we did several auditions for Hal Prince and whatnot and got the, got the job. And then took over from Sarah a bit later down the line. So, so you started as the understudy. So I you did. were au fait yeah. with everything that was occurring. Well, not really. No. <laughs> Because we weren't really allowed to watch many of the the very close uh, shot uh, rehearsals, you know. So um, the night before I went on, uh, Sarah was ill. The night before I had to go on, I had to watch the show uh, from the back of the auditorium and write down all the moves in the dark at the back and then um, try and put it all together the next night. So I was uh, just a tad... Anxious. (laughs) Anxious. <laughs> do, do, do you get nervous? I mean, everyone gets well, nervous. I was don't terrified they? that night. Well, who would? Who, who wouldn't be? I mean, look how big Phantom of the Opera. Uh, uh, I mean, not so much now because everybody knows what Phantom of the Opera yeah. is, of course. But then yeah. it's like a really big yeah. deal. It was a big deal. It was very exciting when we were standing at the side of the stage listening to that after the auction scene, and the, well, there's this big overture thing where all the scenery goes up, which is very exciting. So, what was Andrew like yeah. when you first met him? Um, well, I was sort of blissfully unaware because I'd, I'd vaguely known about it because I was mainly in the classical world. I sort of hadn't really taken that much notice, you know. So, but um, you know, it was fine. It was just, just fine. So uh, there yeah. you are, and you knew that um, you were going to be facing Michael Crawford. Yes. Who, who you obviously were quite aware of. I yeah. Guess. Well, yes, because I used to watch um, some others do. Some Evan, others do. Evan. <laughs> I won't try. And, and of course, um, <laughs> hello Dolly. He was in. But he's that, lovely, yeah. isn't he, Michael? Oh, Crawford. he's lovely. Yeah, we got on. I can mean, he's lovely. I've only met yeah. him once. Yeah. And and did I run the story past you how I got into television? Uh, yeah, I think. Oh God, you better remind me. Yeah. No. no <laughs> without being boring about it, I, I yeah. went along to the BBC and I wasn't chosen. And I went to the bar and I was having a drink like the others. And I thought, mm. oh, sod this game. And they were all looking at me, and I looked round, and at the time I'm talking about Maria, yeah. they're all going, oh, he does, yes, oh, he does. Oh, yes, right now you tell yeah, me, you look a, a spitting image. Because I looked like Michael Crawford. Yeah. If, if you look at the film The Knack, yeah. and old pictures of me, you'll see what they meant then. Yeah, yeah. So Absolutely. because of that, I got on the programme. Yeah. <laughs> and then later, I did meet Michael Crawford at a variety club, too, and I said, I must tell you. Yeah. And I just told him the story, and he's, you know how he smiles a lot? Yeah, great smile. And yeah. he, he said, oh, that's great. Yeah. That's a very good impression, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> your, face, he, he your was... face took on his face just then. Immediately. <laughs> yeah, he was. Yeah. He, so when I say he's lovely, yeah. it was just the once I met him. Yeah. No, and, and, and you worked with him. Was it? Was he quite social and everything? Um, yeah, he was quite social. I mean, we all, we'd all go out to various restaurants together and whatnot. And um, I used to have to go to his dressing room before every show for notes. You see. Which was good, really, because we'd, we'd recap on what happened the night before, you know. And try, but I learned a lot from him because it was obviously it was sort of my first gig after um, music college. So um, I had a lot to learn. That's a uh, big deal, isn't it? Yeah, Straight into I know. What, the, what, what would have been the biggest mm. show in the world? Uh, maybe. Yeah, maybe. No, maybe come music. on. It was, uh, <laughs> I, 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 no, I know. <laughs> and, and tickets for that were... Yeah. Yeah, like, like oh, they were queuing around the theatre. I've seen yeah, them you, when I passed. Yeah, I know. We used to have um, fans that came that had seen it 600 times. That is slightly worrying, I have to say, but uh, <laughs> they literally keep coming back. You know, oh, so, this is yeah. wonderful to have you in the studio. The <laughs> next choice you've chosen are mm. the, 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 the uh, Diva. Il Diva. Il Diva. Singing She, which is a Charles Aznavour song, and I'm a great fan of So Charles why have you Aznavour. picked all these ugly singers? <laughs> They're 
<laughs> not ugly. I'm kidding. <laughs> Go on, carry no. on. Yeah, no, Charles Aznavour. I um, I've been inspired by him because I, I sing a lot of his songs in my one woman show. Um, I remember sort of being inspired by Liza Minnelli singing some of his things. There's a lovely sign language song that he wrote called Quiet Love, which is beautiful. Um, so yeah, just very inspirational. This is she, which I love. Love this song. Dance Me to the End of Love, a Leonard Cohen song done immaculately there by uh, Maria Kesselman. Mm. Uh, and that's available on your latest... Is that your latest CD? This is my latest CD. It's Yeah, it's called Dance Me to the End of Love, appropriately enough. And um, it's, uh, it's all you, about You know iTunes. the problem with that song is that I've got Leonard Cohen so in my head because I, I do genuinely know the song. Yeah, yeah. But uh, a tremendous... Um, his lyrics are... Oh, Fantastic. Yeah, so well done doing that song. And all, all I'm nagging on about here is that <laughs> with his songs, you kind of, and there are groups that have done his songs. And I yeah. keep hearing Leonard Cohen even. Even with, then, because it, yes. Even though they're good, you know, yeah, what they've I know, done. Yeah, I know. I think it's often the case with artists that make such a big impression with a song, isn't it? You yeah. can't, and try, then other artists try to do it afterwards and never quite. No. You but uh, you, you, you've done well there, <laughs> girl. You. So what else is on that CD? Okay, Shout well, it out for the people. <laughs> okay. This um, next one is uh, Waltzing in the Clouds. But, but um, before we oh, go there, oh, yeah, okay, we, we were going right. to talk about Benny Green, weren't we? Yeah, that's right. So um, I did a show called Two Smart Girls, which was on at the Queen Elizabeth Hall. And it was with me, Benny Green, Leslie Mackey. And we were doing the story of well, linked with music, Deanna Durbin and Judy Garland, because they actually started their careers together in the same film. So which, a film called Every Sunday, I think. I think I've got that right. Um, and uh, so we decided to, because they started together and went very different tracks, to put this show together. And I was, as a kid, I've always been inspired by Deanna Durbin because I love, loved her voice. Um, and uh, So how old would you be at that time when you were uh, inspired by her? Oh, gosh, um, probably... 10, 10, 11, 12, I don't know. I used to watch all those black and white films of hers. They were all a similar sort of story where she puts together an orchestra and, and puts on a show, you know, that kind of thing. Similar to, you know, the way Judy Garland started off with Mickey Rooney, all those kind of very similar storyline films. Uh, and did you come from a... Me I know I'm diverting here. Yeah, yeah. I'm just trying to picture it. Yeah. Uh, your family musical. Yeah, my mum, uh, who, who passed away this year, actually, but she, um, she was a fantastic pianist. Um, and she she used to play for uh, ballet school, arts educational, where I went to school as well. So I've always had that influence of music, you know. From and that was through your mother. Yeah, through mum. Yeah, dancing, music, singing. Well, what kind yeah. of piano was it? An upright or? Uh, well, uh, she uh, uh, had a grand, a she'd my grand. She had yeah, which was a lovely old piano, and uh, she was a wonderful pianist. Uh, so you learnt the piano through yeah. your mum's influence. And what about yeah. your dad? What did he do? Yeah, um, dad was an accountant. Okay. Um, but he, mm -hmm. also, he also loved music as well. So all sorts of music. So he got me listening to lots of different records from Tchaikovsky through to James Last, you know. <laughs> so, no, I, I, right. I, I, it's just lovely to know where you're coming from because to, yeah. um, you know, come on to uh, do what you've done. Oh, I, I, I just think it's, just it's a job, such isn't it? a, well, <laughs> it's a job uh, a lot of people would like but wouldn't be able to do. Huh. Uh, and uh, you know, once you, you know, oh, no, it, it is a big deal, Maria, because it's it? you. You probably don't see it. No, it's, so know, tell me about that light that drops into the audience. Oh, oh, the chandelier. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that was always a worry because things were always going wrong on that show. It was either the remote control boat didn't work and the you know, ended up heading towards the orchestra pit with both of us in it, things like that. Were the you actually in the chandelier? No, I no, I wasn't in the chandelier. No, nobody was in the chandelier. Oh, no, because I didn't think no, they were. No, that, uh, that often either didn't drop or dropped too fast. <laughs> We'd all have to back up. Actually, there was a seat <laughs> number. I have mentioned this to you already. Yeah. I, I, did, I did hear it on a radio show somewhere. Yeah. And I wrote that seat number down. I just can't find a bit oh, of paper. Yeah, but yeah. There's a, the best That's a really optimum place to get 
the get crashed on, you mean, in the in the audience? Well, well you know, if, <laughs> if you sit in this particular seat... <laughs> Take if, your life into your own hands kind it, of It thing. is that kind of thing, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we did the 25th anniversary at the uh, Albert Hall a couple of years ago, and they had uh, a massive chandelier there. They completely re- rebuilt the set, which was fantastic, but it didn't descend, luckily. I think they were very wise there. So were there so, ever, ever any accidents while you were there? In it? Um, various, sort of not terribly bad accidents. We, we all uh, got evacuated into the street with the audience once because there was a fire. I think somebody lit a fag under the stage and um, it was before the smoking ban, obviously. Mm. Uh, <laughs> could, could, 